Hi, I'm Mark Hughes. Welcome to Disability Viewpoints. Joan Wilshire is our uh, co-host today, and Kamisha Jones is going to be our special guest in a moment. Uh, we want to also say that Secretary of State uh, Steve Simon is going to be here, and uh, because on November 5th we're all going to vote across the nation and in the state of Minnesota. Now, in the state of Minnesota, there's a great history here that we've had a couple of vice presidents uh, before Governor Tim Walz was just chosen. They are Hubert Humphrey in 1965 and Fritz Mondale in 1977. And so Minnesota's had a lot of national light shine on it and probably will again. So, uh, but we'll, right now we welcome Kamisha Jones uh, to our show. Welcome to our show, Kamisha. Thank you. Good. Uh, nice to have you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, family, uh, anything you want to tell us. All right. Well, I'm the youngest out of three. Um, my mom is a nurse. Um, grew up in a household with my mother and my stepfather mm -hmm. and my aunts. Um, graduated from Cooper Robbinsdale High School. Uh, played football for Park Center High School. Um, recently just got out of prison for being incarcerated in December. Um, What's interesting about that is that the legislature last session passed some great legislation where people who were incarcerated can now have their right to vote back. And that is really history making, if you think of it. And, uh, and we're honored that you got your voting rights back. And, uh, but it was just last session that the legislature passed some of that. And so how do you feel about that? I feel a lot of different feelings about that. Um, currently, right now, I feel like it is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good thing all the way around to have that restored, not just for me, but for everyone sure. right. like me. Right. Um, <clears throat> I just don't feel like the right to vote should be taken away from anyone, no matter of uh, any circumstance or situation. You know, we are all still human beings, and we were given the right to vote, mm -hmm. and that given right should just remain there. That's and, exactly um, right. And it, it shouldn't hinge on what happened in the past. No. Especially once that you've um, served your time and you're now out in the community looking to be gainfully employed and go to school and, and really start your life over. And um, so it probably means more to you more than most people even to be able to vote. <laughs> Well, when you say that, um, so the, the, the right to vote has been given back to me, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing. Now, when we talk about employment and being welcomed back into the community and re-entering back into the community, mm -hmm. that is something that is not a given. No. Okay, so um, typically people look at people that are incarcerated like, hey, we don't want them in our community. They're violent, um, they're not good examples of what we would want our kids to look up to or what we would like to have our, around our community. Right. Um, so we're frowned upon. Um, it's hard to get employment. They say it's a free, equal opportunity employer. That's not true. Mm -hmm. um, once the question occurs of, mm -hmm. hey, there's a gap in your resume, where does that gap come from? It's discouraging because uh, when you go to an interview, you go to an interview to present yourself. Mm -hmm. You, sell more yourself. than less, you're selling yourself like right. you're a product. Right. And you want mm -hmm. the employer to choose you out of mm -hmm. all these other brands and all these other make and models. So therefore, mm -hmm. that gap in that resume, it, it, it puts you at the bottom. You're no longer like a, a top pick. You're mm -hmm. at the bottom of that. And the only way that you can answer that question to me, in a good way, is to just be honest. I mean, right. if you if you cut corners and you lie, they will find out. Well, um, and if you if you say, "Hey, I made a mistake," right, and just tell them, they'll they'll know that you're honest, and and who knows, you might get the position because they liked your honesty. And I I think if I were hiring, I'd take a good look at that and honor that. So what would you say to others like yourself who have, are um, back out in the community after having served and completed their time about this new situation um, 
with the legislation being passed, you are able to uh, restore your right to vote. What would you tell others? Um, it's to go and vote, um, to, to not still do it. It's not going to be um, something that's going to be worthwhile. What would you t tell others like yourself? Educate yourself. If you're going to get out there and you're going to vote and you're going to have a voice, you want to have a voice, educate yourself on what you're voting for. Know what you're voting for. Know what the, the people that you are voting for, what are their motives? Right. What are mm -hmm. they trying to accomplish? What are, what are they trying to do? And ask yourself if, if, if that, what they're trying to do aligns with sure. what you see your future looking like or what you feel you know, is, is for you. Right. You know, right. don't just go off of color or where a person grew up or, okay, well, this group of people likes this person, so I'm voting for that person. Don't go off of any of that stuff. Like, just truthfully educate yourself. Watch, watch the news. Watch, read a newspaper. Like, mm -hmm. get involved so you know what you're voting for and then get out there and vote and educate other right. people. It's kind of like a teach one, each one. Like, Absolutely. If you educate yourself, then you can teach the person next to you and educate them. That way, we're all kind of on the same page. Yeah, Kamisha, everybody makes mistakes. You know, yeah, I and know. I made a lot of them. But what what do you think you've really learned from all this? How, how do you think you've grown within the past year or two? What I've learned from being incarcerated is everything is about choices. It doesn't matter if it's in the, the split of a moment or doesn't matter if it's in the height of anger. Everything you do is surrounded by a choice. And that one choice can dictate your future. It can dictate your every move from the time you make that decision. So think. Stop and okay. think about what you're yeah. doing before you make decisions and choices because those decisions and choices can determine how you live the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. a lot of people don't tell you that. You know, the judge is not going to tell you that. The prosecutor is not going to no. tell you that. They're, they're going to. No one's going to tell you how much yeah, they're, because, you're going to ruin your yeah, life yeah. by making choices that make but you a convicted because, felon. Because so, the judge is going to make it pun punishable and admissible by law and deal out what the what the law, uh, you know, states. and He's not going to tell you to, to try harder next time, usually. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I wanted, I wanted to find out that very thing. And then my next question, and then I'll let Joan take some, is uh, what do you think your future holds now? Uh, what do I think my future holds think, now that I can vote? Well, now mm -hmm. that you can vote and now that you can do whatever you want to do, you're, you're kind of, your past is kind of put behind you. It'll still be there for a while. But this will soon go away, and there'll be more positives than what happened, I think. So what do you think your life holds for you, for you from now on? I live in a world where my past will never be, it will never be shoved underneath the rug. Okay. Whenever a person says my name or looks my name up, they're going to always see my record first. What I choose to present is what they will see. And what I choose mm -hmm. to present is a person that is educated. I... From the time I got out of prison, I was employed within one week of being out of prison. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like my future is going to hold wonderful things as long as I put Re effort right. and as long as I stay focused on what I want out of my life. My life can be whatever I want it to be. It's, it's, up, it's up to me, ultimately. Me being able to vote, it, has, it changes that a little bit, but... Um, you know? Yeah. Um, Does it help you to talk about it? A little bit. Yeah. 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 A little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, since being incarcerated, I, I feel like uh, my mission now is to help other people that are incarcerated right. or are mm -hmm. getting out of right. incarceration. Okay. Because when I got out of being incarcerated, I have a good support system. Um, I'm very grateful for my support system. A lot of people don't have that. I have that. I want to give that to other people because without a support system, right. it's, it's hard. hard. And and I ain't going to lie. Like, it, it really, sometimes, some days, you're wondering, what am I doing it for? Because you're trying so hard to be what. Okay, good. Thanks, dude. You know, right. 
you're, you're trying hard to be what they say you should be in the community, what they say you should be. And no matter what, people mm -hmm. still see your record, they don't see you. But with the, with the right support behind you and with the right people in your corner, you know. You can do it. You can do anything. Right. So are you ready for your elections that's coming up here in the next six weeks? Are you ready to vote? Have you done some um, investigating and uh, looking into um, who you're going to vote for? I have, I have. You don't have to tell us who you're going to be voting for for president. <laughs> oh, okay. No, but you're going <laughs> to be right there at 7 yeah. o'clock in the morning. You'll be so excited, right? I'm just teasing you. I will not be excited, but I will be there. <laughs> you will be there. That's great. That's great. Okay. You know, and I was just sitting there thinking about Maya Moore from The Lynx. She had a different situation, but she did something similar. Mm -hmm. She went into prison and, and helped a friend of hers and then retired from the Lynx and they got married and she helped him through his mm -hmm. legal juncture. And so, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen to just Kamisha Jones. It happens to some people who are, who are a lot more important than we are, all of us sitting at this table are celebrities. So don't, you know, I mean, you, you make a mistake and you, you move on and now you're going to vote. You're going to have your say, and that's what's important. You've got a voice. Change the things I cannot accept, accept the things that I cannot change. But you have, if you want to change, come November 5th, you cast your ballot. And if you, if you don't want to do anything about it, then there's, you know, you had your chance. And so that importance to vote, it's the American way kind of. And uh, I, I just, I really wish you well in everything you do and uh, your employment. And I think you're on the right track now. And uh, Thanks for coming on to talk about the yeah. important legislation that was passed over a year ago. Um, I th yeah. We're excited for you to be able to vote. You know, I, I'm proud of you, and I'm going to say that because I think you're on the right road now, and I think you'll stay there and do well. And so I hope you get more speaking engagements. If you want to do that, I think you, you'd be good to tell the public about your experience or maybe write a book or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's that important. But, but only you can bring out the best in you. And on top of that, just go on November 5th and cast your ballot no, more, no matter which one it is. Okay. And we hope you come back and see us, okay? I will. Thanks for being with us, and we'll be back with more Disability Viewpoints in just a moment. Hi, and welcome back to Disability Viewpoints, and Joan Wilshire is going to join us in a minute, but our next guest today is the Honorable Secretary of State, Steve Simon. Welcome to our show. Thank you for Great having me Great to have you again. back here. Yep. We're 55 days, oops, I shouldn't use numbers, but 55 days away from voting on November 5th. Yeah. It's uh, big in the state of Minnesota. It's big at, in the whole nation, the whole U.S., uh, and it has a, a unique twist this time, as it has... Three times before 1965, we had Hubert Humphrey uh, run for vice president. 1977 was Walter Mountendale. And in 2024, our governor, Tim Walls, is vying for the vice president opportunity. And But we wanted to have you on today. Uh, I'd heard your uh, Minnesota Public Radio interview was great. And we want to start from the very basics, and especially in our disabled community. If I wanted to vote, I can certainly vote by absentee ballot. That's one thing. But if I want to go to the polls, can I have a ride? Who do I get to help me? How does all that work? So yes. you'll start way from step one, then yeah. we'll cover the rest in a few minutes. Absolutely. So just to zoom out for a little bit, mm -hmm. for any voter, whether it's a voter with a disability or not, there are three basic ways to vote. One is to vote on game day, on election day, right. in the polling place. Great. Um, one is to vote early during the early voting period in person. Right. Not necessarily your polling place, but it's typically a city or county building. And again, I just want to say for your viewers, we have a great website. It's mnvotes.gov. M-N-V-O-T-E-S.gov. Okay, one and more time. M-N-V-O-T-E-S.gov. .gov. And you can uh, input your address and it will tell you where those locations are, okay. both your game day or election day polling place 
and where you would go if you wanted to vote early right. for that month and a half right. or so before. The third way you can vote is to order the ballot to come to you. Right. You can vote from your kitchen table. You can vote from your home. Mm -hmm. and so those are the three. You asked a question about the day itself, right. about election day. So if anyone wants to go to a polling place on election day. Right. So there are very few p places that will provide sort of publicly funded transportation mm -hmm. right there. But if you can get a ride to the polling place, that's key. There are a number of mm -hmm. groups that do it candidly and frankly. I recommend that you contact one of the political parties right. because if you if your loyalties are with a particular political party, they're going to want to make sure that you get to right. that sure. polling they place. They want your vote. Right. Yeah. They want your vote, right? So either candidates or political parties, whoever that is, none of my business who that right. is, but they are very good at getting people right. transportation to right. the polling places. Right. So um, if I need help in the when I actually have to check the box or pull yep. the lever. How do, how do I go about getting that? Well, all of our poll workers, which in Minnesota we call election judges, sure. that's the term that we give, um, they are trained in exactly that. So you ask someone at the polling place, one of the so-called election judges, the poll workers, and they will do that. Now, here's the interesting thing. Under federal law, every precinct in America, not just Minnesota, every single one of the precincts, and we have 3,000 precincts in Minnesota, must have at least one machine for use for sure. voters with a disability. Mm -hmm. They go by different names depending on what county you're in, what vendor they use, but that is a federal requirement for all elections. Right. So that will be there. Great. That's good. Now when does early voting start? That starts in Minnesota. It always starts um, uh, about 45 days before the uh, general election. So that's going to be on Ten Friday, days. September 20th. Yeah. That's okay. the start of our early voting period where anyone between September 20th and November 5th, which is election day, can vote either in person at a government office or can mm. have the ballot come to them. Okay. Also, I, I, the next question I can think of is a simple one. If you show up to, the, to the, your voting place at 8 o'clock, even though you're at 8 o'clock and everybody's panicking because the place is going to close, right. you're still going to get a chance to vote. That's right. It's you, after 8 o'clock right. they got to cut that off. That's right. Our polling places in Minnesota are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. But if you're there by 8 p.m., if you're in line, if you're ready to vote, yeah. no problem. If yeah. you don't get to vote till 8.09 or 8.12 or whatever, that's yeah. fine as long yeah. as you're there yep. by 8. Yeah, and also if you mail your, uh, your absentee ballot in, it cannot be postmarked. It has right. to be there. You either have to drive it down there, have right. somebody drive it down there, get it in the mail a couple days before, uh, because I think you have to have somebody sign to witness that you actually did it. And I, That's right. I, I don't know if it can be a family member. I don't know the yes, rules. Yes, absolutely. It can be. As long as it's an eligible Minnesota voter, it can be a spouse, a partner, family member, you name it. Yeah. Uh, but you're absolutely right, and thank you for that reminder. We are not a postmark state. You'll read yeah. about and hear about right. other states that are. Yeah. We are not. Our traditional rule is you have to get your ballot in by election day. And for in there. and for the lack of a polite right. word, I bet there've been a lot of people upset that they didn't know that it's postmarked and it really doesn't count. You have to have it there. Yeah. Now, if um, a person with a disability or anyone is finding that the polling place isn't accessible to yes. them for whatever reason, um, what can they do that day at that time? Yes. Is there a number to call? There's a couple places you could go. So if you go to a polling place and they are not doing what the law requires them to do, mm -hmm. whether it's the width of doors, the type of door handle. What about parking? Parking, accessibility of restrooms, elevators if applicable uh, yeah. that are not working. All of those things, there are at least a couple different places. First, whoever is running that polling place. If it's a city, go to the city, county, run, mm -hmm. go to the county. You go, you talk to the chief election judge, the person there, the, the, the chief of all the, the poll workers there, and you can register a formal complaint there. You can also go to the city council, the county, county board. I'm talking about that day. Mm -hmm. Right. You can also call our office, the Office of Secretary of State, <laughs> yeah. and we will coordinate, and we get this all the what time. What is that number? So that number is 651-201-1322. Say it one more time. 651-201-1324. Okay. There you go. So that's where you can call to make sure we're aware of it. Then we can get with the county or the city and make sure yeah, that it they doesn't make happen the again. Well, not only that, but hopefully, <laughs> depending on what the yeah. flaw is, that they can make modifications that right. day. Right. Yeah. 
And, and you brought up a very good point, and uh, it's a little out of succession here, but uh, I found it interesting that if somebody goes away to college to another state, you have to really vote in your home state. You can't vote twice. In other words, in your home state and wherever you are too, be it yeah. Nebraska or wherever, you can't, you, it's a felony if you do. Yeah, you can't vote twice under any circumstances anywhere. Young, yeah. old, doesn't matter. But I will say this about college voting, because we get this question a lot. People will say, well, man, I'm from Duluth, but I'm going to school in Minneapolis. So what do I do? Do I vote in Duluth, where I came from, or Minneapolis? Or it'll come at me this way. They'll yeah. say, man, I'm going to school in Minneapolis and I want to vote here, but my driver's license still says, says Duluth my home right. address. What I will say to every college student, you are not a prisoner of your driver's license. No. Okay? Just because it says that yeah. doesn't mean you can't vote in Minneapolis. It's where you lay your head. It's where you wish to be considered a resident, right. which can still be in Duluth. Right. But you got to pick one. Yeah, Don't you, pick both. That's right now you're in Minneapolis, right. so you probably should vote yeah. over here in Minneapolis. Well, I mean, it depends. Yeah. Some people might want to vote where they're from, but sure. you just don't think that it, you're bound by right. what yeah. your driver's right. license says. Right. You have to pick one, clearly. Don't do both. Right. But you've got many options. Right. 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 Um, talk about the campaign um, that we've got going. Here we vote. Yeah. We're very excited about that. Here we vote, which we just launched, is our Minnesota voter outreach and education program and theme. And the idea is, hey, here in Minnesota, we vote. That's what we do. We're really good at it. We're really proud of the fact that three out of the last four elections, we were number one in America in voter turnout. And so what happened? Wisconsin even beat us the last time. No, they did not. They didn't? No, they did not. Okay, now, well, that's Joan, good. Now, Joan, you can feel better now. Okay. Yeah. Yay. So <laughs> this is about getting Minnesota back to number one, but more importantly, it's about educating people. So we've got, and if you go to mnvotes.gov, you'll see we have an online toolkit. We have, meet, we have logos, we have design materials, we have social media content mm -hmm. where people can not only convey and push out information, but also can learn information about everything. You know, our website, mnvotes.gov, you can register to vote on that site. You can find out where your polling place is on that site. Mm -hmm. You can order the ballot to come to you on that site. You can even find out who or what is on your ballot. I know there are a lot of voters that I talk to who say, you, well, you know, I know about president. But are we even voting in my area this year yeah. on right. county commissioner? What's even up in yeah. my area? You just put in your address and up will come a sample ballot with all the contests and all the candidates and their websites. So Say, right. your, your new campaign, do, can we get a video of that so we can play it here maybe sure. next time we do the show? And it sounds like we've got the accessibility piece covered. Have you run into in the past elections very many issues around accessibility, whether it be um, somebody who's blind using machines or the physical piece, because um, I've run into parking issues mm -hmm. in the past right here in the city of Minneapolis. Yeah. Yes. I remember when you ran into one. Really? Yeah. What was the issue? That it just was too um, far away? Or it was, was too far away, and, um, and it was really um, a misconception, I think, of, between the people that, um, that were running the school to the people um, that we're putting up all the information for the voting of how far was too far. Um, anyway, I think so once everybody got together and talked, they realized um, because there was two different kinds of parking. And so they thought that one was sufficient and really it wasn't. And so it was, you know, parking, when you have two different parking lots available, it can be um, confusing thinking yeah. one or both are the same. And there was a dramatic difference on which one was there, so, and well, which one to use. You know, to answer your question, we're fortunate. In Minnesota, I would say it is, there are minimal violations. Not zero, but yeah. minimal. Mm -hmm. Most places do a really good comprehensive job, but occasionally something will fall through the cracks. So right. we have partnered with a number of groups from the state, Disability Law Center, and others to do right. ongoing visits to polling places. That's we can't to get all, uh, to all of them at once. We got 3,000 of them. Right. So mm -hmm. that would take tremendous people power to do. 2,000? 3,000. 3,000. But little by little, we're, we visit those and we do comprehensive write-ups. Are, sure. are they meeting all the standards for parking, for doors, for elevator or other access, for right. restroom access, et cetera, for presence of all the equipment in the machines? Right. But people get pretty high grades, pretty high marks around the state, generally okay. speaking. But we want to know. And for any of your viewers as well, sure. if you encounter a place that is not doing what it needs to do, we want to hear about it. Great. Hey, and uh, we owe you, you got a big honor in July, the American 
Associations of the Secretary of State, your president. Great, right. congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And, hey, listen, we gotta we gotta go, but we want to thank the Secretary of State oh, for being on here, mm -hmm. and we thank want to you. thank Joan Wilshire for right. really putting all Thanks. this to get thank on you. here Kevin? and being yeah. on here. I'm Mark yeah. Hughes. Thanks for watching Disability Viewpoints. We'll be back soon. Bye for now. Well, that was a pretty quick half hour, and that brings to the close another uh, edition of Disability Viewpoints. We want to thank Secretary of State Steve Simon and Kamisha Jones for being on here. I mean, there was a lot of things that I didn't know before I came here today that I've learned now and know. Joan, how about yourself? It was a great it show. It was a fabulous show with um, Kamisha Jones um, talking about her, her ability to um, vote after um, her recent re um, incarceration. And that is just um, a wonderful um, thing for her. And she's excited to be able to vote. And so we encourage all others in her situation to do right. the, the same thing. Absolutely. And again, let us remind you before we sign off today, on November 5th, it's your privilege get in, out to vote. in America to vote. get out and vote. And please do that. And we'll see you next time on Disability Viewpoints. On behalf of Joan Wilshire and I and the entire team, I'm Mark Hughes. Thank you, and we'll, we'll see you next time on Disability Viewpoints. Bye for now. Hey, this is Steve Simon, Minnesota Secretary of State. As you probably know, we have a big, big election coming up, not just for the presidency, but for a lot of other offices down the ballot. And I'm here to tell you that your vote is your voice. Now, in Minnesota, we have a great and long tradition of voting in sky-high numbers. Three out of the last four elections, Minnesota was number one in the country in voter turnout. We want to get back there. We want to get back to number one. But more importantly, regardless of the overall numbers, voting is about using your voice it's about making sure that you are heard. It's about making sure that you're doing something not just for the community, but for yourself. Because people and communities that vote tend to get more attention and tend to get more of they want. So go out there and find out the information about where to go and how to vote and how to get registered to vote at our website, which is mnvotes.gov. That's mnvotes.gov.